today's video is about our wash pack station at Satin Hill Farm. I'm just going to show you as much detail as I can and uh, I just want to let you know that this is not the correct way to do this. There is no correct way. This is just how we've done it. Um, taking ideas from a lot of different people and I just want to share as much as I can with you so if you are planning a new wash pack station, um, looking for some new ideas or trying to upgrade some of your equipment, I just want to show you guys today what we have going on and what's been working well for us and how I've tried to streamline the process as much as possible and in a very small space. So this wash pack station is really set up for greens. Uh, this is not for Russian root vegetables or other stuff. So when we harvest the greens uh, from the field, it comes in, it goes either, either into our refrigerator or it goes right into this, uh, this greens bubbler here. We're in well water here, so the water is usually 50, 55 degrees year round. It really cools down the greens quickly. Now I'm gonna try to show you as much detail as possible and I will try to put a link for every part I can think of in the description down below. So if you are looking for some of this stuff, um, I'd like to help direct you to uh, sources to find it. So this is a 75 gallon uh, sock tank. I got this at Agri Supply and the drain it came with was on the side here, um, but I put a bottom drain in so that I don't have to tip it out to drain it and to uh, rinse it out. Um, the big part about this that makes this work is this manifold here. This is a um, two inch PVC manifold and these are all standard fittings. You get these at Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever. Um, you can see I have it in this pattern here um, and I have a bunch of small holes drilled in there. Don't ask me how many or what size, just try it out and see what works. Um, some of the things are glued, some of them are not, and that way I can still take it apart if I need to. Um, and this sits pretty much on the bottom, and uh, what it attaches to is a jacuzzi uh, air pump that is mounted down below. I'll try to get a, a shot of that too. Um, and what this does is once this is filled with water, uh, it bubbles the uh, water and washes the greens. It's a really gentle bubble, uh, it doesn't bruise the greens, um, and it releases all the uh, dirt and bugs and stuff like that and they just sort of fall to the bottom. It's a great piece of equipment, totally worth it if you wash a lot of grains. I couldn't imagine doing it without it anymore. Um, other um, things that we have going on here, we, I put, just put this recently in. This is an automatic fill. Um, I just have a simple, this is all uh, three quarter inch PVC and I have a little valve here and there's at the bottom, this is what's called a Hudson valve and this guy will uh, automatically shut off the water. So it's really nice when I'm either changing out the water while I'm doing other things, um, I don't have to worry about it overflowing because before I had that valve, I definitely overflowed it a few times. So just a little bit about this float valve and some of the water that uh, is coming into the system here. So this is, uh, I have a T back here underneath that is attached to a hose spigot and um, I have two things coming out of it. One is for the fill and then I also have just a, uh, a hose here that I use to do some watering uh, for microgreens and starts and also um, you know spray things out and things like that. So it's nice to have that as an, another option. So one of the um, garden hoses comes up here and uh, it attaches to a three quarter inch PVC setup. Got a nice valve here and then the Hudson float valve which is actually a one inch fitting but you can get the adapter. This guy I used for uh, scooping out greens and moving it over to the spinner. So this is the jacuzzi air pump that we use in the system. Uh, this is what pushes air up into the PVC pipe and into the manifold that creates the bubbles in the greens bubbler here. And this is just a two inch PVC pipe that slip fits into the jacuzzi pump. Uh, it's not even glued. A lot of people I see mount these on the wall or some, some way above the tank, which is great. Um, I just mounted it on the back of the stand here so that if I wanted to move this around or anything, it's, it's just already started to set up and it's totally out of the way. Um, and coming up over here, um, at the top here, um, this is a PVC union and this allows me to easily take apart and uh, remove the the manifold uh, from the greens bubbler. A lot of people um, have different placements for their drains or they don't have a drain and they just dump out the tank. Um, I really wanted to have one that was keeping the um, the tank stationary so um, the trick was to find one that had a very low profile um, so that the water could easily drain over the lip there. And uh, a lot of the bulkheads I found were had a pretty big lip. So this one is really, really low profile. I got this at um, Home Depot or Lowe's. It's a, what's known as a bar sink strainer or a bar strainer assembly. It was under $10, super cheap. And um, it seems to work really well. I have the tank pitched slightly uh, downhill towards the drain. And what that allows is the water to drain out so I don't have to pick up the tank and move it. I really wanted to keep it as uh, stationary as possible. So coming down under the tank, you can see this simple stand that I built. It's made out of 
four by fours and two by fours, and the tank just sits right on top here. It doesn't really move around, especially when it's full of water. It's nice and heavy. Other things to point out here, I put a waterproof switch in for the spa blower. Uh, this allows me to turn this on and off safely so that I don't electrocute myself if there's uh, any water or my hands are wet or anything like that. The other thing I want to show you is the drain, the bottom of the drain here. These are uh, sort of standard uh, sink type fittings you'd see under your kitchen or bathroom sink. Uh, it's a little bit modified here. It turns into PVC and then over to a barb. And the nice thing about this is I have what's called a discharge hose or discharge tubing and it lays flat until it's full of water. I'm using a lot of different applications. I think it's inch and a half, I believe. It could be two inches, I can't remember. And uh, the nice thing here is that it sits under my garage door and when I want to drain, I just open the garage door even a little bit if it's cold or too hot outside or whatever and I want to keep the temperature consistent here. And it allows me to have a pretty large size drain without actually putting any holes in the wall or um, through the door. So after the greens are bubbled, we put them over here into our uh, spinner. This is a modified washing machine. Um, there are lots of plans online um, that give you really nice, elegant solutions. I bought this one for $30 on Craigslist, and I couldn't wire up a simple switch or timer because I realized after taking it apart that the motor is three phase and it's a lot more complicated. So what I did was I just disconnected a lot of the, and bypassed a lot of the sensors, and I had to leave the head on the unit, um, and I just built a stand out of scrap. <clears throat> and um, allows me to, to run this. Um, it's not ideal, but again, at the time when I was building it, this is the cheapest I could find one. As I said, 30 bucks on Craigslist, and uh, pretty pretty heavily modified. Um, if you're not comfortable with this sort of thing, um, there are some plans online that really help you with that. Um, so after it's taken apart, I just have one of these. You see a lot of people that have orange ones. I don't know, I found this blue one at Agri Supply. It works great. I think it was like 20 bucks or something. And it this is seriously awesome. Like it, it takes so much of the water off. Um, and what's nice is that the greens go in here and then they can easily be dumped onto the drying screen after that. And uh, this is the only thing that actually touches the greens. So pretty happy with this situation here. One thing you have to keep in mind is the the discharge from this. So when all the water comes out of the greens and to the bottom of the washing machine, it has to pump that water out. So unless you have a drain to pump it into, um, you do that or you can direct a hose outside. Uh, let me show you what, what I've been doing here. So again, not an ideal solution, but it's working for now. I just have the discharge hose going into a bucket and I just drain that out. Um, for the volume we're doing right now, I can run quite a few batches before this thing even gets half full. So this has been working out fine for me. So the last piece of equipment in this greens washing station is the drying screen. It's a pretty simple setup. It did take a little while to put together. Um, you could make this four months. I decided to mount it on the wall. Uh, it just fit really well in the space here. Uh, I was trying to squeeze it into as small a footprint as I could. And uh, I, that way I was only able to get two fans width on the, on the dry screen. In retrospect, I would have liked three or maybe even four so I could just dry more at once and just sort of speed up the process. Um, these fans are just standard box fans and there's a little lip right here and the fans just sit right there. It's actually pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, on the bottom here, we have a quarter inch uh, screen and you lay out all the greens. Uh, they you take the basket and dump it over here and uh, they, they'll dry over here. I find this step to be crucial. What it does is it really just takes all the last little bits of water off the greens and uh, it's great for the customers. It really improves shelf life and they don't open up a bag of greens after a couple days in the fridge and they're all kind of you know, nasty. So it keeps them really, really fresh. Uh, I also will dry some microgreens on here. Like we wash our sunflower shoots and some of the other micros, um, they're just a little bit damp so we can throw them on here to dry them a little bit. You have to be really careful when you're drying them because you don't want to over dry them. And it really depends on the humidity in your area, the temperature, but you'll feel it. You'll, you'll get a sense of it. Um, it doesn't blow hot air, it blows ambient air, so it doesn't, it doesn't heat it up or anything like that, but you can wilt it if you leave it on there too long. Another key piece to this that's made it super, super convenient is the fact that I put a pivot right here. There's a pin that I pull out that holds it in place and then the whole screen just pulls over and I can smack the screen and most of the greens just come out. Um, if you're doing a lot of micros, it might get a little stuck, but it's super important to be able to switch it out in between uh, different different types of greens that you're washing and, and cleaning so that you, know, you don't sort of mix them up. And uh, this has been also a huge help being able to uh, flip it over and dump them out. So from here, 
Uh, when they're all ready, we'll just pack these right into bags and uh, they'll be done. So it's really not a very long process. It's streamlined in that it goes from one to the next to the next and uh, it doesn't take up a lot of space. Another recent upgrade for me has been these shelves and it's funny to talk about, but having shelving right where you need it is super crucial to having an efficient setup and uh, staying organized. I keep, um, you can see bag scale, my bag taper. If you don't have one of these, you should get one. Get this at Uline. And uh, it's just nice to have everything within arm's reach and uh, give yourself some more storage space. So um, I really recommend trying to stay as organized as possible, uh, shelving in places where you can, you can slip it in. Um, some of you guys have, might have a lot more room than me. I don't have a lot of space, so I really need to make it as efficient as possible. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed uh, the tour of our washing station here. As I said, it's a very uh, compact layout, um, and the reason for that is we don't have a lot of space to work with here, and I don't think that you could have more than one person working here at a time, but it actually works great for me right now. If you have more space, uh, feel free to spread things out as much as possible. Get a bigger drying screen if you have space. Uh, that seems to be kind of the bottleneck in, in this system, but again, it can totally work with, two, with a two fan wide uh, drying screen. So. The, uh, the topic idea for this video came from someone on Instagram and I'm looking for more ideas on topics so that I can make videos for exactly what you're looking for. Um, I really feel that it's important to share this information with each other so that we can have more people growing more good food and having farms that are sustainable and the fact that they're making money, they're efficient uh, and they can be profitable. And so with that, I really feel it's important and, and, and really am happy to try to share as much information with you as possible. I tried to share as many details as I could think of uh, in this video. So if you have more questions, leave them in the comments below. You can also hit me up on Instagram, uh, which uh, hopefully uh, you guys are already following along. But please like this video, share it with your friends, hit the subscribe button. Um, I really try, I'm gonna try to get this information out to as many people as possible and that really does help. So thank you very much. I look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you in the next one.